will go in three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Rich in the Philippines, and why? Because that's my name. Today's show is called Five Things You Should Know About Tagay Thai Before You Get There. I've had several people contact me and ask me to do this on Tagay Thai and to see what my real thoughts were on it. I have been to Tagay Thai um, twice. When I first arrived after um, I stayed in Pasai for a couple of days, and then on my second time, I stayed there for maybe a month and a half, a month at least, to try to find another place, uh, a month and a half, I guess. I stayed at the same place. I stayed at SMDC, the wind. And um, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about all of that. But first, before I get into that, I want to say thanks for the support. As always, really appreciate it. Now let's get right into the content about Tagai Tai. Look, the five things about Tagai Tai, it's really important that you realize that the very first thing to know about Tagai Tai before you get here is that it's popular. It's in demand. There's a lot of people going there. And with that said, it's going to be a little more expensive than you thought it was going to be. My rent that I paid, and I went to the same people that I went to the first time, so I built a relationship with them. I stayed in a one, I guess it was a studio, a smaller studio, and when I first stayed there, it had a wall separating the bedroom, and I liked that. Um, I liked that in units because it gives you some separation in the unit. It was probably, I don't know, 26, I mean, 26 or 32, I guess it's meters, it's, it's real small, um, but it was nice, 18th floor, facing the green belt in the back of wind. It, it really was a beautiful view. Corner unit, I liked it. It was quiet. It had a lot going for it. One of the things it did not have going for it, though, was the pool. There's three pools at that, at that condo unit, and you have to pay, unless you're there for a year or a longer lease, 150 pesos per use, or I think it's 300 pesos for the weekend or holidays. I really didn't like that. I mean, I did it anyway. The pools are very nice. There's two adults and one kid's pool. And then in that same complex, there is a badminton, ping pong. Um, with that said, you have the, us the usual SMDC sign-up armband um, security. The indoor pool is heated, and it's a big lap pool. So I give it a thumbs up. That's the SMDC in Tagaytay. Now, the bad part of it, I did think it was expensive. I believe my all-in was between 550 and 580 for the month. And I just kind of felt that it was, it was very much, it reminded me of America in so much of just the cost. Um, so that's the number one thing about Tagai Tai. It's popular and being popular leads to being expensive. You have people coming down from Manila. It's, um, yeah, it's very popular. The number two thing about Tagai Tai that you must realize, which goes back to the number one thing, is that it's beautiful there. The weather is just, um, it really is incredible. The, the weather and the temperature, the, the greenness, uh, it's the lake, There's, and just the forest, it really is a gorgeous place, which makes it so popular. So many people come there on staycations, and really it's... Again, number one and number two are really related. Let's talk about the number three thing about Tagai Tai that you should know before you get here, and that's the traffic. I personally think the traffic rivals Manila in a different way, though. Manila, you have tons of traffic, whether it's Makati, BGC, Pasai. But overall, the traffic in Manila crawls. The traffic in Tagai Tai it moves pretty brisk during the week. It moves fast during the week um, to the point of where crossing the street, when I first got to Tagai Tai, I'm like, man, if all the traffic is like this place, I'm out. Um, it just, it just, and then the weekend comes in Tagai Tai and you go from fast moving freeway, like right in front of the wind to a parking lot. And it's all goes one, it all goes one way on the weekend. So they change it from two-way to, to go going one way. And I guess it helps. I guess not. But many of the locals there, many of the people that live there, on the weekends, I've said before, they just don't come out. 
it's just too crazy. So, I mean, so there's uh, popularity, there's high price, there is traffic. The traffic, like I said, has to be seen to be believed or the Filipino, you know, the Filipino traffic. I have since stayed away from it. Um, you know, there's People's Park there. There's the Sky Ranch is a really fun place there in Tagaytay. There's many cool things to see in Tagaytay and to experience and some really good restaurants. With that all being said, the traffic and getting there, I rode my motorcycle. It's the only place I've ever tapped anybody on my motorcycle in the Philippines. And it was a trike rider. And I hardly was going fast at all. He stopped in front of me and I tapped him. And it was no big deal. He looked back. I looked forward. Sorry, Po. And he just went about his way and I went about my way. Our motorcycle group likes to go through there to get to Batangas, the back way. I prefer not to. Okay. The number four thing, and you're going to laugh when I tell you this. The number four thing, and it's very hypocritical of me, and you can actually say that, is the tourists, the tourists, which goes to number one, being so popular. But number four, I couldn't believe the number of tourists that were there. And I was one of them. Foreigners. You know, people from, a lot of people from Asia, which was a huge difference between, uh, let's say, Thailand. When I went to there to visit Thailand, there was Eastern Bloc, there was Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, um, Canadian. When it seemed I was at Tagaytay, it seemed like it was Korean and um, Chinese, and, and they were all on vacation. And on Fridays at Tagaytay at Wind, it was a zoo because people were checking in for their three days, checking out on um, Sunday, Monday. Uh, it, it really goes back to the number one and number two, actually all of it, it all, goes to, it all goes together of how popular it is. But the tourists were really a lot for me. And I didn't want to be in a place, you know, in this chapter of my life where I felt like a tourist. I really, really didn't and don't. Where, I, where we are at now in Trece, you know, when I first got here about two years ago, there were very few. I mostly hung out with Filipinos. You know, there you hang out with people. Or you don't hang out with people, but people come and go every three or four days. Again, it reminded me a little bit of Hawaii in that respect of just people coming and going. And the people that I met, the uh, expats that I met in Tagaytay, something else to think about, they're more spread out. The expats that I've come to know here were, I don't want to say we're closer knit, but we kind of are. We're a closer knit area. We're, you know, within walking distance sometimes of each other. There's a whole bunch of us within walking distance. In Tagaytay, it's not the case. And I didn't connect with people because they, everybody was so spread out they would have coffee meetings and lunches and, and dinners and stuff. And they'd say, hey, we're going to Bag of Beans or wherever and see you there. And being a newbie, I had no idea where I was at. I, I was not taking public transportation at the time. And nobody ever offered to you know come get you or to show you where it's at. Or I just didn't feel connected like I do here. So with that being said, all those things. And the last thing. And this may be the biggest or it may be the smallest, depending on how you look at it. There's a volcano here. Yeah. It sometimes erupts. Yeah. Um, we have seen the, the VOG here in Trece, all the way from Tagaytay. I think that it happened like once or twice, once really bad, where the sky was just almost orange. I, never, I think I'd seen something like it in a fire, in like a forest fire. So I saw a forest fire in Elsinore once and was caught in it. With you know all that being balled up together, you have a volcano, an active volcano there. And they've literally closed the town down before. And they have these alerts that just depending on how much um, ash it's spewing, you have to just have that in the back of your mind. There is a, you know, there is a volcano here. Uh, you know, push that out of the way. The, the, view, the view of the lake and the volcano, and it's, it really is an incredible place. So I'm glad that I did it, and I'm glad I'm not still there. 
So I hope this helps you, and I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts on Tagaytay are. I mean, you know, Steve talks about it before. He's actually featured some really nice homes. And I, you know, and I have people all the time that invite me there. And, you know, now that I don't have wheels with, with the bike being gone, I have no desire to get on a, a jeepney and do two hours to Tagaytay. Not going to do it. So let me know what your thoughts are. This has been Rich in the Philippines. We'll go in three, two, one.